circular economy is quite widely discussed. It's quite commonly discussed, if I may really put it that way. And this whole concept about value chain is quite diverse or even debatable on the way we put it up. Now when we talk about strong sustainability practice, whether it's in supply chain or whether it is overall for the business, what exactly contributes or what constitutes a good sustainable practice is something that we probably need to reflect a little bit. So one thought, when we are talking about sustainable practices, what is it that you think we are talking about? The impact of environment, social governance on the business or the impact of business on environment, social and governance. Both of these is also the latter. The best part of it is, it is we, whenever we talk about sustainable practice, we are normally talking about the environment impact only. We very rarely focus on social and governance. But the fact remains, there are different interested parties to ESG and they sit on both sides. Like for example, your regulators and your society sits on what is the impact of ES, uh, of what is the impact of the company on ESG. But your investors are sitting on the other side to understand how is the company managing its ESG risks. So when we talk about a good, strong sustainability practice, it ideally should encompass both. Point in case, Lego toys. 10% of their pet, the two bricks, smaller ones, comes from recycled pet bottles. So they are falling on both sides. This practice falls on both sides. It is helping recycling, it helping environment, society, even the regulators are very happy. At the same time, 10% of their manufacturing cost, the raw material cost, it's actually 8%, has reduced because of that. So your investors are happy as well. So when we talk about circularity, it is not just about the practice where we are reusing. It is far beyond just reusing. And we look at the higher aspect, the bigger aspect of it, which I, which I just discussed. What is interesting is, our industry has picked this up in so many ways. And today, that's what we are going to discuss with our panel. How is industry looking at recycling, at uh, circular economy, in terms of adding value chain, because this is one thing that can contribute to both the sides, and it is the value that you will add to your value chain partners who will in turn add value back to you. And when I say value, I literally mean the PNL. So we have Bipin, Bipin Odekar, Head of Sustainability, EHS, and Operational Excellence at Marico, sitting to my left, and then. We have Shankar, Shankar Karale, he is the Vice President, Corporate Environment and Sustainability at RT Industries. And we have Kostov Fadke, General Manager, GCCA, that's Global Cement and Concrete Association. So, gentlemen, let's start the discussion with the first question and while responding to that, a little brief about yourselves as well will, will really help. So the first question that we are putting up is how are you and your organization aligning value chain partners to your sustainability vision? Ben. Hello. Thank you. Uh, thank you to the organizers uh, to have a wonderful gathering today. I think uh, 
I will say that I am very happy when uh, the subject of sustainability is discussed at various forums because uh, today still in India uh, we need a lot of efforts to make it more popular and, and increase awareness about the topic. And we still need to invest in, in, in improving on the practices. Although the Western world had created negative impacts, but they have also started creating a positive impact by improving their practices. And as a country, we are we are at such a place where probably uh, we we, uh, we we are we call ourselves as a sustainable country. But the moment we getting into a developed country, we are going to face the consequences of it. Okay. To to me, I represent a company called as uh, Marico Limited. And the disclaimer: we are not making of biscuits. We are into edible oil in edible oil and beauty products, uh, in hair care and skin care products. And I, I hate sustainability which is uh, an operation excellence. We have uh, our sustainability targets for 2030 declared in eight focus areas. And uh, one of them is definitely uh, is on responsible sourcing. We talked about value chain and second is on uh, circular economy. So both have important critical material issues for Marico. And through these two specific focus areas where we work along with our suppliers to improve their sustainability practices and try to implement circular economic principles in various aspects of our operations. And these are taking it forward. I think as we, we move ahead, we can get into the details of these things. Thank you. Yeah, good evening and uh, thanks to organization. I'm Shankar Karai from Arthi Industries Limited. Uh, this organization is a manufacturing specialty chemical that is a raw material for pharma, pesticide, rubber and all these things, industries. Mostly we are doing uh, benzene chlorination, nitration and all these things. So, we have supplier about uh, engineering supplier plus raw material maybe 5,000 to 10,000. Uh, but uh, we have called a few years back some 100, 120 suppliers. We have communicated our visions about uh, sustainability and ESG. And uh, we have declared in that meeting only that you are the business partner. So that impacted on the suppliers. And uh, we are uh, yearly, we are communicating our again vision missions for particularly ESG as well as sustainability. And you are, we are rewarding also in that cases. So that is a really impact and uh, then you got uh, particularly scope 3 reduction train, not much because this is a very slow area, but uh, we have started reduction train, uh, even though boundary increasing for particular this. But uh, really there is a something requirement, uh, legal requirement, then only there may be the uh, agility and speed will be there. Uh, otherwise, this is a very, very difficult area to uh, communicate to supplier as well as downstream side also. So that is for a really uh, requirement. One thing we have done, we have audited our suppliers, possible supplier, and we have communicated our good practices for circular economy, like Spain. They may be using virgin SCL or sulfuric acid. We have generated a, a sulfuric spent sulfuric acid which is comes under hazardous waste and uh, they have started utilizing we are supported for rule number 9 application and SOP preparation from CPCD that practices also we have done uh, with supplier as well as downstream side that we got resulted in that case thank you so much wonderful Pastor? yeah uh, good evening everyone uh, thank you captain uh, and thank you mr desai for Wishing us all the best for the panel. So I represent uh, Global Cement and Concrete Association. Uh, so the association represents the material which is consumed, maximum consumed after water, that is concrete. That is the second most consumed material on earth uh, after water. Uh, and at the same time, uh, GCCA globally we represent close to 80% of world cement capacity, excluding China. And from China, we have three, four large cement companies who are part of us. Uh, we are a CEO-driven organization. Uh, it means that the CEOs of all our member companies, they form the board and they basically provide the direction to GCCA on various aspects. 
The focus is on positioning cement and concrete as a sustainable material of choice. So that's the manner agenda we have. Uh, but at the same time, our focus as to drive this mission is to focus is on sustainability or you can say decarbonization and the innovation within the cement and concrete industry. Uh, so if you see cement, uh, uh, actually as the name suggests, the value chain partners, how we are driving uh, the circular economy in the value chain partners. Uh, coming to that, you must have seen cement uh, being used. India is the second largest cement producer in the world after China. But at the same time, our per person cement consumption is just 160 kilograms per year. And the global average is somewhere around 500 kilograms. So you can see the enormous gap between the global average and India. And at the same time, we are growing at a 7%, 8% uh, CAGR. And as India grows, the infrastructure is required. And for infrastructure, you need a cement. Without cement, you can't uh, build any infrastructure. And fortunately, unfortunately for me, unfortunately for the <coughs> society, there is no other option for the cement. So uh, in this context, the cement, as I say, it's a least cost material. What does it mean by least cost? Anybody has an idea what is the cost per kg of cement? Just a ballpark figure. How much we pay for one kg of cement? Seven rupees. Seven rupees. Yeah, exactly. It's between seven to eight rupees. It's a manufactured product. Tell me any other material which is so cheap, which is a manufacturer. The water bottle is 20 rupees a liter. Salt is 20 rupees a kg. So there is no other material which is so cheap. But at the same time, we need it in such a large quantity because it has a large, in, in spite of large quantity, also it has a highest CO2 footprint. Because when you manufacture one kg of cement, you are releasing almost close to 800 kg of carbon dioxide. And if you want to avoid CO2, you should avoid manufacturing cement. Because from limestone that is calcium carbonate, you heat it to 1500 degrees Celsius, you separate out the calcium oxide, the other element remains is CO2. So if you manufacture cement, you release CO2. So it's a hard to abate sector. Like a steel cement is a hard to abate sector. But at the same time, as a GCC or the cement companies, uh, you will be surprised to know the Indian cement sector is a, one of the most energy efficient cement sector in the world. Means it has the lowest carbon footprint in the world across. So only cement we are manufacturing the waste or the most energy efficient cement is not the final, you can say the destination. The destination is how we create awareness amongst the value chain partners, basically the construction industry, the structural engineers, the builders, the contractors, because then actually the product which is being manufactured most energy efficient has to be used efficiently into the next value chain. And that's the, you can say, in order to achieve that, at the GCCA what we have done is we have released a net zero roadmap for the cement and concrete industry. That is, we want to reach a net zero CO2 at a concrete level by 2050. And in the previous session, they were saying that only it's saying the target is not enough. We need to have an intermediate target. So we also have an intermediate target for 2030. What should be the target? The cement sector should achieve by 2030 and then 2050. So manufacturing the best quality or the lowest uh, cement with the lowest footprint is not enough. We also need to create an awareness uh, and uh, uh, create amongst our value chain partner, that is a con construction agency, that how they efficiently use that cement. So that when a building is constructed, actually that building has the lowest embodied CO2. And that's the whole, you can say, the purpose of GCCA is to create awareness amongst the value chain partner how they can really build an infrastructure or a building with the least CO2 footprint. That only will help India as well as the uh, globally the entire world to meet the two degrees 
uh, scenario by 2050 as per the science we started. Wonderful, so thank you for that. So if I if I really summarize the question, the engagement with the value chain partners is as of now seem to be happening more at the awareness level and at the training level. So we are educating them, we are doing a lot of awareness, so on and so forth. That brings me to the next question. How do you see this circularity play out in, uh, with, your, with your value chain partners and in your respective industries? What are you seeing the trends coming up as uh, which way it is heading? Thanks. So, uh, so the circular economy is a very wide concept and then uh, they started with people calling it as the R4R R. and now recently one of the articles I was reading where that R has reached to 10R okay. and then different English words are getting attached to it. But what, what in, and then all English words have some meanings uh, to, to ensure that it is, uh, it, it is uh, added as a principle uh, to the economy. But what I understand uh, very clearly is that uh, we are part of a, a very large scale industry. Now, I think Mr. Pai was also talking about that scope 3 is a linkage between, uh, it is more or less a linkage between all the companies. And anything you would like to drive in your organization, you are supposed to work with different people uh, who are working or supplying to you. Typically for an FMCG company like Marico, I think plastics are becoming very important aspect. Our packaging materials are becoming very important aspects of our product. And uh, we, we have a program for circular economy, primarily addressing the issues which are related to plastics. What we said that, that we will have uh, four important principles which we will follow uh, about circular economy for plastics. The first thing is, is basically to uh, dematerialization, work on the packaging designs uh, with, with, with computerization and different uh, new technologies which are available so that with minimum quantity of plastics, can you uh, create the packaging material or can you reduce bottle weight, uh, bottle uh, and caps for that? Second is that what are the percentage or share of your packaging which is recyclable in nature? So that when your product is consumed, the packaging which is going as a waste uh, to, uh, to societal waste means, can somebody pick up and then there is a possibility to recycle it. So that it doesn't go and increase the landfill area in the society. Third is how can we ensure that uh, the recycled contents are utilized in our products as a part of the packaging. So which is generally called as post consumer recycled materials. And fourth is that how we ensure uh, that the EPR law which is last few years which is coming up uh, which, is, uh, which is followed strictly uh, not only on the paper but followed through right practices uh, because you can drive those things uh, by asking more. Uh, more details from the agencies who are working on behalf of you. So with these four uh, basic principles we started working in and then uh, we, we have a uh, target to ensure that 100% of our packaging material should be recyclable in nature by 2030. Uh, we, we are planning to have 30% recycled content in our packaging from next year onwards. Uh, we, we ensured that the, the packaging materials which are not recyclable are, are eliminated uh, from our uh, sources. Every year we are we are working to reduce the weight of the plastic we are consuming by improving the plastic ingest. So that by design we eliminate the emissions of our packaging materials. And the last thing which we recently started is the ensuring the self-waste consumption within our organization. So that we can we can start we, we started with something called with our value chain partners as pilot loss free unit. So every unit where we are we are supplying plastic and then asking them to convert into bottles or caps or who is doing packaging for us, we have to do a regular uh, material reconciliation with us and whatever the material which is not utilized, then we buy and ensure that it is it is recycled in an environment friendly manner so that it doesn't add uh, problems to the society and that unit will be certified as a pallet loss free unit. So you keep on adding your value chain which is public loss free or plastic waste issues free and then ensure that people understand these principles and take it forward. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 
So uh, generally, uh, chemical industries are uh, more water consuming, energy consuming industries. So general practices in chemical industries for circular economy, they are trying for uh, zero liquid discharge. Sometimes uh, boiler condensate recycling for water. That have two benefits. One is the water conservation as well as the heat conservation also, energy conservation. Second thing, uh, waste recycling bag. Third thing, process improvement for uh, yield improvements, yeah, solvent recovery improvements. Third washing, utilizing flash washing. And uh, waste sending to co-processing into cement industries. And they are taking uh, raw material from nearest area so that uh, scope 3 as well as uh, circular economy in various. So particularly, I will give you an example of our key industries, uh, my industries, uh, for circular economy. So we have water consumption, really water consumption about uh, 10,000 KLD. But due to the, we have uh, improve, implemented ZLD, about 16 units we have, 10 units we have ZLD units. So about 85% uh, effluent, generated effluent we are recycling back into the processes. And uh, we avoided withdraw about 44%. And uh, that 10,000 KLD water we are reduced about uh, only 5,400. So that is a, a really one good example for circular economy. But if you see zero liquid discharge also have carbon footprint. More carbon footprint than recycling. So we are trying uh, how renewable energy will be utilized for that generally. So that carbon footprint also reduced for generally implementation. And we have this year we have started about 13.4 megawatt renewable energy purchasing. So that got CO2 emission reduction as well as cost reduction because many uh, faculty morning tell me that uh, Mumbai power is about 10 to 12 rupees and we are getting only 4 rupees that. So there is a 7 crore cost reduction as well as carbon foot reduction is there. Yeah. So and we are, dis we are not discharging, it's only about 15 percent in front we are discharging. So that is also one good thing. Second, whenever if you see the chemical industry having different different emissions like NOx, SO2, SCL, yeah, S2S, so we are converting into the byproducts. If H2S is there, then NSH conversion. NOx is there, then uh, NSA generation there. If SCL gas emission, we are converting into 30% SCL. And we are selling as a raw material for someone. So like this, yeah. Like this, there is a conversion of the emissions into the valuable product and selling to as a raw material to others. So that is also one good part of the uh, circular economy. One more big area is the particularly chemical industry, hazardous waste generation. So in our industry, RP industry, about 4.5 lakhs metric ton per annum is the waste generation. And last year we have circulate, yeah, we have utilized as a raw material, we have converted, yeah, we have sent to cement industry as a uh, fuel, that is about 92 percent. Only 8 percent we are sending to sometimes landfill or sometimes incineration. And uh, our two units got zero landfill waste. Uh, certification only last week. So that initiative uh, we are taking for particularly waste. That waste going to someone raw material, waste going to cement industry as a fuel. Because cement industry having three T's. And there is always three T's are better. One is a time, temperature and turbulence for combustion factor. I will give Comparison for particularly cement industries clean and normal incineration for residual uh, combustion. So incineration have time about two seconds only resident time. Cement industry have about six to ten second time. That's help to proper combustion. Incineration have temperature about 1150 degrees centigrade. 
cement industry have about 1600 to 2000 degree temperature. Most of the common incinerator have stationary chambers, there is no turbulence. And the cement industry almost 100% rotary type of uh, cement industry. So there is a turbulence benefit. So combustion factor also very good. And there is a alkalinity in cement industry due to the uh, limestone. That utilizes to reduction in generation of dioxin and furan. That is a very, very toxic compound generated sometimes in incineration plant. So that's why Gujarat Pollution Control Board also promoting for the co -res generated residue to, to co-processing at cement industries. So that is a good initiative uh, for circular economy. Like we have spent generation, like sulfuric acid spent generation that is comes under hazardous waste as per 2062. So that we are converting into single superphosphate as a fertilizer. So we have internal systems like SCL, we are converting into the calcium chloride and we are exporting also for particular engine. If I see example of single superphosphate, that is a really help to farmer because it's a poor farmer value is a cost is a very less because we are utilizing spent time. Government also giving subsidy for that because uh, promoting for farmers. In NSA we are utilizing as a raw material. Aluminum hydroxide we are generating, we are giving to someone as a polyelectrolyte in ATP plants. They are utilizing. Ammonia we are giving to concentrated because 20% ammonia generated we are giving to. Like this, 92% we are recycling all these things into time. Like this, there is a circular economy, is a very, very important part for energy conservation also. Because uh, almost all chemical in the energy uh, incentive company. So, uh, for energy, most of the industries, even the RT industries, uh, recycling condensed back into the boiler, about 60 to 70 percent. That's how heat also, because delta T is there about 80, 80, 90 degrees. That helps to reduce the energy. Coal replaced by biomass, that is also one trend, but slightly there is availability issues in many areas and due to the competition there is a cost. But industry has started replacing coal by biomass. Then economizer provided for waste heat storage. So that is also one energy initiative and many equipment installed uh, energy efficient equipment like multiple effective operator now replacing by MVR. So steam economy if you see the uh, 4C operation single stage operator required 1 kg steam per 1 kg operation. Multiple effect required about 0.33 kg steam and particularly this uh, MVR technology required only 0.1. So that type of technology uh, accepting and uh, utilization is started in the industry. And uh, really there is a, definitely there is yeah, particularly scope 1 and scope 2 period. Uh, definitely shortly chemical industry will be over the net zero also. Out of 90%, 92% say, that's quite impressive. So we talk more about this in the next term. Because of uh, yeah, coming to the cement industry again, uh, so uh, cement industry has, a, has emerged in last, I can say, 10-15 uh, years as the solution provider in the entire circular economy aspect. So you name any waste, probably it can be treated in the cement plant, as uh, mentioned by uh, Mr. Shankar, that entire hazardous waste from industry can be very well be treated in the cement plant. So cement industry has kind of emerged as a solution provider. Including, I, you may not be aware that since 2002 or 4, when in Indian uh, cement standards got modified and we started using the fly ash and slag based cement. Okay. So before that, uh, the disposal of a slag and a fly ash, uh, especially generating from the thermal power plant, the fly ash and from steam plant, the slag. It was the biggest issue for those industries, how to dispose it of. So slowly the cement industry started utilizing it. So currently if you see almost 85% of the fly ash which is generated in India is used 
by the cement and construction industry. Out of this 83%, almost, uh, I may call it as 95% is used by the cement and the construction industry. So entire fly ash generated from the thermal power plant is used in manufacturing the blended cement, which is the PPC, Portland uh, Pozzolana cement. So this was the, before the term circular economy was coined, the cement sector was already practicing it. Similarly, it for the slag cement, uh, which is the slag generated from the steam uh, plants. So entire slag can be used in manufacturing the cement, which is a PSC, Portland uh, slag cement, without compromising the quality of the cement. So cement sector has kind of an emerged as a solution provider in circular economy since 2002 or uh, three, I could say, in India and globally. Another important, there are two more aspects where circular economy is being practiced, is there's an EPR regulation which has come, extended producer responsibility, especially related to the plastic <coughs> waste which is generated. So all the plastic waste, uh, uh, or the plastic, uh, we can say packaging material consumers or the generator, they have the responsibility to dispose of that plastic. So one is they can send it to the recycler or reprocessor, a second option, which is the maximum we utilized in India, is sent to the cement plant. So cement plant basically treats that plastic. Plastic waste is a very good substitute for a coal and a pet coal. And also with a temperature beyond 1500 degrees Celsius, you are able completely uh, able to destroy the hazardous properties of plastic. And also at the same time, you also substitute the coal and a pet coal. So the cement company are treating the plastic waste generating uh, the credits and giving it to the plastic uh, consumers or plastic waste generated. So this is a very, you can say, a successful business case for implementing circular economy within the cement and concrete industry. Second, I would say, is the AFR, the alternative fuel and raw material. Globally, uh, especially in countries <coughs> like uh, Europe and US, they there are some cement plants which are running with an 80 to 90 percent of the alternative fuel, which is nothing but the municipal waste. So they have substituted the coal or a pet coal with the municipal waste uh, by segregating them from the material. So from municipal waste, you have to segregate the material which is non-biodegradable and non-recyclable. So the material which ends on the landfill side, though, though that material is diverted to the cement plant. Cement plant are utilizing pre-processing and co-processing it with the coal and thereby manufacturing the cement. So there you are addressing both aspects. One is avoiding the material going to the landfill, avoiding the methane generation at the landfill site, increasing the uh, life of the landfill area. And at the same time, you are eliminating the CO2 emissions from the coal and a pet coal, which are, you can say, the scope one emissions. So there, you are having, again, here the win-win situation, both <coughs> you are managing the municipal solid waste, and at the same time, you are reducing the scope, uh, scope one emissions from the coal and pet coal. Uh, the best case for this, or uh, there was a paper also published here, is during the COVID-19 pandemic, it was not allowed in India, but in Europe and US, the entire plastic waste which was generated during the treatment of the patients was diverted to the cement plant for the safe disposal, uh, because what he mentioned, those three residence time, increased residence time, increasing uh, turbulence and increased temperature. So those all, that was very well treated instead of an incinerator. And it was again uh, a benefit to the society and as well as uh, to the uh, cement companies because they are able to substitute coal and pet coal. That's how the circular economy, uh, out of three hours, almost four hours are implemented within the cement and concrete industry. And the last example which is now quite upcoming is the CND waste, construction and demolition waste. So there are various practices being identified, a lot of research happening, where the construction and demolition waste after <coughs> scientific segregation, you can use it as a filler material in the concrete manufacturing, wherever you don't need a very high strength concrete. So in uh, Mumbai, in Vikroli, there is a plant by Godrej uh, construction where they are utilizing the construction and demolition waste in paper block manufacturing. 
so it's a very you can say a very uh, popular case for a circular economy where you are where as we are growing we are building infrastructure at the same time lot of construction and demolition waste is being generated so that you can again recirculate or recircle uh, you can bring it back into the construction uh, activities maybe in the infrastructure or maybe in the building sector for a low you can say low strength uh, requirement so these are the cement sector is kind of a emerging solution provider as far as circular economy is concerned wonderful concept all right we have 10 minutes more and uh, i would like to utilize the 10 minutes for any q and a session and that's it Yes, sir. So, cost of also. Firstly, thanks for sharing so much with us. Concrete, I have absolutely no knowledge. So, when you said that the cost or the selling price is seven rupees a kilo, which means cost will constantly be a constraint. Even if you look at the recent M and A, which has happened in the cement industry in India, with I think Ultra Tech, which is I think it was uh, the Chennai-based group, localization and having the plant close to the local area of consumption is very important so my question is in this scenario where cost is such an important parameter how do you drive sustainability because it is likely to likely to necessitate higher invest yeah this is a very important question which we basically uh, questions the sustainability of the cement sector <laughs> so cement is a business as i mentioned it is very cost competitive so if you want to transport cement beyond 200 km it doesn't become viable that's why we have wherever cement is manufactured you have to basically your cust uh, customer base is within <coughs> has to be within 200 km so there are various ways and means the innovative ways i could say the cement companies are now like they have a manufacturing plant Uh, at a limestone near the limestone deposit, so where actually uh, means the transportation you can keep it as a minimum, and then instead of a manufacturing the cement, they manufacture the clinker, and they transport the clinker to the place near the market where you find the grinding units at the cement plant, not the cement plant but the grinding units. The grinding units is nothing but it basically brings the clinker because that's a hundred percent calcium oxide. and you mix it with the supplementary cementitious material like a fly ash and slag and then you manufacture the cement and distribute it from the especially from the commercial point of view at the same time the sustainability as such is the cement sector is identified as a hard core it's 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 very difficult to reduce the co2 because a manufacturing cement you will release the co2 right so what the cement sector is looking at is more from the ccus point of view right you will release co2 then you have to put up a ccus that is carbon capture utilization and storage plant where you will release the co2 capture that co2 and use it in some other product so where you manufacture cement but don't release the co2 so uh, one of the there are almost we have carbon co ccus tracker which we have Managing it as a GCCA, so almost close to 100 pilot plants are in either in process or in the design stage across the world. Uh, the first commercial plant, which is coming up, which is in the Norway, uh, which is a 5 lakh uh, ton CO2 per year, the capturing, and that plant is not done by cement. That is done by the government because cement plant can't do such large investment on their own. it has to be a collaborative approach where government needs we need a support from the government the funding as well as the transportation because cement can capture co2 but in terms of transportation and storage has to be where you need collaboration and inputs or funding or support from the government so there the cement sector is taking a one step it expect the government and the financial institutions to take two steps and come forward so that the ccs plan should really See the light of it. Yes, sir. 
Uh, very, very good afternoon. Uh, first of all, this session was full of examples and we can just keep on noting down and you know it becomes a book. So it is a you know real value addition to the audience like us. I have two questions. One is to Mr. Bipin. You consume a lot of uh, coconut, right, to extract the oil. So how do you, uh, you know, manage the broken coconuts waste you know, in a sustainable manner? Second question is to Mr. Kaustu. Uh, we see the ancient structures uh, which are, you know, still after centuries, they are still, uh, you know, present, but they are not made of concrete. So is there any, you know, innovation happening in terms of uh, making the cement manufacturing shorter, simpler, and still giving, uh, you know, a better output product, you know, which gives sustainable structures? Yeah, thanks for the question. Just for uh, everybody's understanding, we are a manufacturer of coconut oil and a flagship brand of parachute. And that's the reason this question is probably directed. So you're right, sir, we are, we are uh, probably the largest buyers of coconut in India. And our coconut crushing capacities are probably largest in Asia, uh, considering our three, four plants we have. So if you look at how is the river supply chain of coconut works, Coconuts are predominantly cultivated in uh, two Indian states, Southern Tamil Nadu and Kerala, where almost you can consider 80% of the coconut are being cultivated. And especially in the Tamil Nadu region, so there are there is an industry which works for coconuts, it's called as a conversion industry, where the farmers are selling their dry coconuts to these industries, and there are large, uh, you can say, um, small scale industries are there who cut down these coconuts, make it dry, remove copra out of it and then you have a shell and other remaining materials for that. And those things are actually sold at very high value because, because they are used in choir industries and they are used in activated carbon manufacturing. These activated carbons are so pure that they are highly valued uh, for the bleaching industries and nowadays there is a new stream which has started where the coconut shells are utilized, are uh, exported to Europe for making ice cream cups. And they are fetching more values than other things. So as such, uh, nothing goes, it's, it's called as contradiction. And nothing goes away sort of tree. What we are doing is that we are running a program called as contradiction, where we are working, we have an uh, agronomist, 140 agronomists are there, who are trained on coconut scientific cultivation. And they are going to farms and then advising farmers how to cultivate coconut in a scientific way so that there is lower environmental impact and better productivity which they can get. More than one lakh farmers are associated with the program and getting benefited because of that. Wonderful. But that addresses your question. Wonderful. Three minutes more. Kasuf? Yeah. In terms of the uh, the ancient structures, they, they were made up of limestone slurry and the stone. Currently, we don't use stone, uh, so that's uh, the one change has happened. And second, the earlier structures were not skyscrapers; they were kind of a ground structures, and they were designed in a compression mode. Uh, when you say the compression mode is, the entire weight or the uh, stress is a compressive strength, which is uh, kind of a based on that the building or the structure is designed. Uh, whereas nowadays when we build those structures, those are with a both compression and tension uh, stress. So uh, as a cement or a, you can say the concrete has the highest compressive strength but the least tensile strength and to meet that you use a reinforced vent within the uh, concrete. That's why you use the RCC structures. So in RCC structures you have a steel and a concrete, both have a different coefficient of expansion and contraction. That's why nowadays the buildings which have been designed and the government is also uh, contemplating is can we design buildings instead of uh, 50 years, 100 years, the life of the building. So that you are increasing the life of that structure so that you will reduce the ultimate uh, concrete consumption and the steel consumption. So there is a lot of things are happening at the BIS level where they are contemplating how we can increase the life of the structure so that you reduce the consumption of a cement and concrete. Wonderful. Thank you so much to all the panelists for this wonderful discussion. Thank you everyone for good participation and all the very best.